Well, hi, Pam. Um, I'm so glad you could join us today. Uh, thank you so much for um, this artist talk as part of Bainbridge Arts and Crafts upcoming show, Island Inc. Um, so we're really happy to have you. And I just wanna mention a few things about your background to our audience um, that you've had a variety of uh, careers that have entered into your life as a historian and an English teacher and a calligrapher and now a full-time printmaker and that you earned a bachelor's in history, master's in education and an MFA in graphic design. So a lot of accomplishments there. We are excited to be showing your work and also want to congratulate you on the grant that you received from Arts and Humanities Bainbridge for a project you're calling Marking Time. Right. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that project and uh, the work that's come out of it. Yeah, it, um, I applied for it thinking, oh, this would be cool, but I'll never get it. <laughs> and uh, because I, I, you know, it's high, high standards. And um, I uh, really have enjoyed it so much. I. Uh, it was a grant that several artists on the island got, uh, and they do it every year. And several island artists got I, several months ago. And um, Karen Cornell, who works at uh, Bainbridge Arts and Crafts, also was one of the recipients. And in my project, I proposed uh, the uh, idea of not not paying too much attention to. Uh, the negatives of COVID, but very aware of the fact that we were suddenly in a time that was not like any time most of us have experienced. And um, uh, I called, I've called this project Marking Time. And, and so I haven't responded to uh, the, like I say, I've tried not to respond to the politics or the negativity or that sort of thing. But simply as I've lived through this period, as we all have, uh, making artwork and considering it as part of my way of marking time, I um, and I, it's it's been interesting because I've gone through different uh, phases of what I have um, been interested in, and 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 so it, it's for me a uh, an opportunity to. Um, try different things and to consider the both the fullness and the shortness of time. And so uh, I, I'm working toward uh, having some sort of show at the end of this period, which is a few more months. And uh, some of the sh some of the work in this show uh, will be in that. In looking at your pieces and reading about your work and interests, I know mark making is a very important aspect of what you're interested in coming out of a calligraphy tradition. And, um, and there's one piece I'm gonna um, pull up here right. of yours, your work called Flight Feathers. Uh, this, this is a large piece. Um, that is one of my newer works, newest works, I guess, uh, that is in the show. I think it is the newest that's in the show. It is full of all kinds of marks that um, I could, uh, I will address here about technique and stuff, but it's also, um, I've called it flight feathers. My titles are really important to me and I spent a lot of time thinking about them and um, I try, well, I, I, I do name them um, as in ways that reflect how I felt about them rather than uh, trying to tell you what it is. It struck me that this piece was a response on my part to um, feeling that uh, I, I've, had a, I've had a good run here in what, the work I've been doing and I'm feeling pretty, um, pretty positive about uh, the excitement of working on the press. Uh, that's not always true. Sometimes I'm um, not that happy <laughs> with what's going on. But um, White Feathers seems right because it, it expresses um, that sort of being in the flow and being in the moment. It's, it is monotype and it, 
it uh, there's there's no cutting or anything in this uh, any kind of plate. But I have been experimenting with um, making plates out of non-traditional materials. Hmm. Um, usually, and I have lots of them, and every monotype artist does. I have lots of plexiglass plates, and that's what I usually use to make my impressions or to draw, to paint onto those plexiglass plates and then to transfer it to the paper. But in this case, I decided uh, to try some different materials. And this piece is full of um, uh, several, well, it's not full of, I'd say I've used about five different kinds of plates, uh, some that were even using wax paper as my, my matrix to uh, then transfer so that I could go over and over. The, uh, the piece, however, uh, is made, I'll, I'll start, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, my tools that I used on it. There's a lot of different tools and I, I worked on it over a couple of months. And I see your uh, behind you, right? <laughs> that, that's your press. press. Yes, this is my press. <laughs> yeah. yeah, looking quiet right now. But the, the tools that I used were um, actually, I, had, um, I use, hmm. I'm a very non traditional printmaker. A chopstick? Uh, <laughs> I use uh, chopsticks, that's right. Chopsticks. And um, I like to use the uh, etching ink directly from the tube, squeezing it out and dripping it across. I like to see that. Um, I uh, I also have used pens, uh, writing pens. Like this is a pen that I would use, uh, letting the ink run through there, and then printing it onto the paper using my press. But then I also, and on this piece, used a lot of um, small uh, materials that I that I uh, created using wax paper, soft um, linoleum, and those sorts of things to make impressions directly uh, on on uh, other impressions. So I'm I'm interested in layers, and I'm interested in text, and I do write words. I'm not writing gibberish. I'm usually writing my words more and more. And that's what this is, it's response to things. I, I um, response to what was going on generally in, in this piece. And uh, it's one of my lighthearted, more lighthearted pieces. But the, uh, the, form, the form of the piece is something I've done. And some people may have seen some of those um, pieces over the last few years. I'm very interested in the shape of text on a page. And I, I, uh, that has, that's in there, that, is, that shape is in there. And um, so that's, that's what it's about. I don't know if I've kind of zeroed in on your question. No, I think that gives a lot of good background. Um, you mentioned layering, and um, I know you're showing a number of pieces that involve a lot of layer processes. So I'm going to pull up another image of yours here. The process here includes some of that dripping that I, I was talking about uh, using using um, sometimes tube. sticks or straight from the tube. Um, uh, sometimes from high up, sometimes from low down. I, I as I say, it's very non-traditional as far as printmaking goes, but I enjoy. And then also there's some stencil work in there and uh, going over some of the work with my hand uh, because my original uh, training in art was as a calligrapher and I continue to work that way. Uh, and so the gesture, and you can see some of that movement of, uh, I see a circle in the, in the right hand. I called it pocket notes because it reminds me of all those things that <laughs> you, you carry around with you and you go, oh, look at what this was about. But um, and, and it sometimes has an accumulation. This layering is really important to me. And I, I like the depth 
that layering brings, the opportunity that monotypes present is to um, use that and use it as a... Uh, now, I understand that uh, Wendy Orville was your first teacher um, in printmaking, so she introduced you to the monotype process, is that right? Yeah, I, um, I had not done any printmaking until about 12 or 13 years ago. And um, that's when Wendy uh, came, I, and she may have been here slightly longer, but on Bainbridge, but um, she began offering classes in her studio in monotype work. And anyone who knows her knows how excellent her work is. I think it's magical. <laughs> and she's also a magical teacher. And so, um, the, I think I think just about everybody in this show is a uh, a product of, of Wendy's studio. We I I studied with her for several years, and then um, but as you can see, my work is very different. Uh, but I learned so much about inks and techniques and paper and working, and I did work realistically. At, at a time, but um, as I continued to work, I took classes elsewhere also, and began to realize that my voice uh, could build on all those amazing things I've learned from Wendy, and um, combine with my calligraphic interests to uh, work toward um, the, a kind of monotype that really is not very traditional, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, I sometimes feel apologetic around printmakers <laughs> <laughs> because I sure don't do that. Uh, but everything I've learned, it's, it's the, the rules that are made to be bent if you are so inclined. Uh -huh. So I've, I've had, I just love it. And I love it. But Wendy is an amazing teacher and an amazing artist and deserves every bit of fame that she has been granted here because she's, she's an amazing person. Well, it seems like a really nice community is formed kind of around her. And um, exactly. yeah, it's just all of you um, learning and techniques from her and then going in your own directions with them. And, and it sounds like all of you were pretty involved in setting up the printmaking studio at Barn as well. Um, right, yeah, there's been a, a long history since uh, Wendy, and Wendy is still teaching and really has some amazing students still. And she still um, mentors a lot of us. I consider her a mentor and call her in um, need lots of times to just talk it through and see what's going on. Uh, but yeah, out of that grew um, several informal groups over the years that, uh, because well, little by little, all of us pretty much have gotten presses, uh, bought a press. This is that, that press back here that you can see, my press. Um, and so- at your home now, right? You Yeah, I have, a, I have a small building next to my house where um, I have my press, yeah. And so a lot of, oh, sorry for the phone. <laughs> we'll hope my husband answers it. Uh, the, um, um, oh, back to that. So there were a lot of small groups that came out of this, out of Wendy's studio, and all of us still very much in touch with each other. And sometimes we'll just go over to each other's studio in normal times and ask for opinion or help or that sort of thing. And That's we great. over the years, we, yeah, we put on um, put on exhibits here, there, and everywhere in town, and. Uh, have learned a lot from the process and also by being with each other. And then when the barn was built, um, two of the, in fact, two of the artists who are in the show, Renee Jameson mm -hmm. and Catherine Lesh, who are in the show, mm -hmm. uh, 
led the way in establishing the printmaking studio that is in the barn. Mm -hmm. And uh, terrific time and talent given to making that happen. And um, so it's, it's, it's really a remarkable facility at the barn. And then Jan Branham, who's in the show, and I and many others. I mean, I would go, I could go into a, a list of names, but a lot of us out of that original Lindy group um, have taught there and have worked with people who are learning because it, it's, uh, there's been an explosion of interest in printmaking on the island. And so it's, it's a wonderful facility at Barn. Well, that's great. And um, I really appreciate the, the continuation in education that you're involved in. I know that you continue to learn more about calligraphy, which is, is such a craft and, and there's so many aspects to it. And um, would you say that that's really a, 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 it sounds like a very strong foundation to the work you do you know, that structure that you kind of veer off from. <laughs> Would you describe you. it that way? That's very kind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do believe that. Um, I, um, yeah, I do continue to study and I, I continue to study printmaking also. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, I, 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 I was not working as a calligrapher in, for years although I would sometimes do things on the side, uh, but I was a, a high school teacher and uh, of history. And so I was really busy with that. But over the years, it's been almost 45 years that I've done that. Uh, I've continued to study and it's kind of been my excuse to go away sometimes <laughs> and to take a trip and you know, I have to go to New York, so that kind of thing. But um, uh, and I continue to study now, but it, the um, my focus in the kinds of study I've chosen have really shifted. Uh, I I do believe in that thing of uh, uh, disciplined freedom uh, that it it takes a long time to learn to be skillful at your craft or your art, and um, I I don't think you know I'll. I'll uh, probably pass away. I didn't want to say die. <laughs> I'll probably pass away still working toward that. But um, uh, so I, I do continue to study uh, the, the, the structure and the ideas and the manuscripts. I like to, uh, sometimes I'm in Europe with manuscripts, uh, copying them, working, working from them. Uh, if, if I have, a teacher who's got access, you know, because it's not that easy. And, um, but I also have now um, really um, begun to follow, well, I'd say for the last 15 years, I've begun to follow and have studied with um, calligraphers who are more uh, influenced and are influencing others to considering the underlying structure as a basis and uh, the, as a, um, an opportunity to bring to uh, the art world uh, the, the kinds of uh, understanding that it provides. It's a, it, it's, it's a terrific study. I put this in the show because um, I do, I, it does, it's a small piece. It does show a bit of my uh, calligraphic hand uh, a lot of the a lot of the marks that are important to me in my work, and I I consciously and unconsciously uh, place them there uh, are calligraphic, but usually don't necessarily be able to read. <laughs> You're not usually able to read what um, what I'm writing, but this is this is a piece that is both a monotype and then I've written on it with. Um, acrylic with a nib with a black with a uh, nib and, and then that part was not printed but it was placed on top of the other 
well, you can really see the progression, you know, exactly between each piece. That's right. Yeah. It tells a story. Well, we're so grateful to you for taking the time to talk to us. Very gratifying to have the show at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts. Um, the um, the opportunity to be showing to our island community is really important to us because we love it here. <laughs> we we're printmakers, so we've had a lot of support over the years, and it's great to be in the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really great to talk to you. Be sure not to miss Island Inc, a printmaking exhibition at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts from June 4th through June 27th.